okay, as you can see, it's kind of all go here at the moment. Um, I'm trying to complete the, the upper loop, and as you can see so far, I've, um, I've got the bit coming out from the, the raised town section. That's been put in position and fixed down. Um, you might wonder what these pieces are here. That's the super elevation. Um, on the curves, the train will tilt very slightly as it goes round. You can probably see that mark through there, just tilting slightly from the high on the left down to the, the right, which is slightly lower. As it goes round the curve, it'll get marginally more um, you know, curved. We're talking about fractions here, don't want it tilting on its side. That's what this stuff does. Um, it's only on the right hand side of the of the the track here under the cork and um, that gives it the tilt. But as you come into a transition to a straight, you don't want to just stop it suddenly. So what I've done with the upper layer is I've actually continued the the height of the track, the elevation of it, but on this and this side. So it, it flattens out, I hope I'm making sense here. It comes from a curve like my hand and it comes to straight but it doesn't take a, a dip because I'm still keeping the foam elevations under it so it's lifting it up and you know I did this for a reason because I'm transitioning into another super elevation curve. Um, I'm not going to continue it round at the TMD because it's going onto a, a long straight so it will stop round about that um, the, the blue track setter um, the template but because I'm having a super elevation curve here and I've also got the super elevated curve there I maintained the height if you like um, by using these just to kind of lift it up these are horizontal they are not banked when we talk about super elevation, we, you know, it's banking the track. As a train goes around the corner, it's slightly banks, so it can go at slightly higher speeds um, around the curve. Um, you know, all railways do it, whether it's main lines or um, branch lines. It helps the train navigate around the curve, and I think it reduces wear on the flanges of the wheels as well. Um, so it's, it's a maintain a maintenance, um, you know, benefit as well. It's kind of messy just now. Um, what I've got here is I've just um, roughly cut the, the piece of ply and I've cut them all at angles so they're all kind of slotted together and then temporarily fixed down with these um, uprights there. And as I get round, um, they've obviously been properly cut here. So really from there onwards, I just rough cut just now. What I do is I lay the track um, on top of the cork and then I cut the cork back to the, to the usual um, you know, width like that and then I lift the track and the cork and I fit the super elevations with the foam. That's the best way to do it because, well in my opinion anyway, because I, I get the smooth running of the track first, I get to test it and then I do the super elevation and what I'm looking for is when the train moves from the flat to a, a banked corner it does it with a bit of transition, it doesn't suddenly go, you know, so you're looking for a gradual banking of the track as it goes around the bend. In my last video I highlighted these track setter templates and for this curve I have used a 36 inch um, track setter and the distance has been kept the same right around the track so that two Mark IV coaches can pass each other without clipping each other um, and derailing. And how I've done that is I've just used my my six foot um, weigh gauge and standard track um, you'll notice that these two bottom bits would slot together but we're on a curve they're slightly wider apart and all I do for that is I, um, I test it to see what's acceptable for the coaches and I put little marks as you see on marks on my, my Pico gauge there and I, I know which one's which um, and as it goes around the curve it will gradually come out slightly more as the curve deepens and then uh, it'll come back in to the street again. So I hope that will make sense. Um, and I did highlight these in my last ones and some people have asked me how I avoid kinks on a curve when there's a join. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate to you now. Okay, what I've done here is I've taken the track and it's been cut 
with the, the track cutters um, so that the, the two rails are the same distance out from the, the end sleeper. Then what I did is I trimmed off the, the chairs off both of sides of the end sleeper and this allowed the fish plates, which you can hopefully see there, slide into the rail easier. What I then do is I take the next bit of track and I do the same to the, the chairs on, on that sleeper and again that just allows them to slide in a bit easier. So, there we go, right that's them partially in, now the fish plates are more onto this rail than that rail so I just take a pair of pliers, I can lay my hands on them, and slide them along so that they're equally on both rails, like that. So that's your track joined, there's a gap there just now but don't worry about that, um, then what I do is I take my track setter template and my last pins around about here I don't butt it onto the end of the last piece I kind of overlap so I don't want to take the full in so there's the last one there and I'll maybe put that in that hole there and then you bend the track into position and the track setter gives a, a nice click into position and that's us now got the, the track where the join is clamped in between the, the track setter. Now, what I therefore do is I take my track pins, and these are just Pico uh, Streamline track pins, and I, you can drill a hole in the sleepers if you want, but I've got quite a small hammer, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a, a pin in the second sleeper in, not the one that's had the chair trimmed, because that's not got any, you know, control over the track because it's, it's kind of been loosened from the track. It's the second one in, the first one with the chair on it, in other words, and I just use my cross beam hammer to start it off. As he says, as he loses one. My apologies, I'm working in a kind of tight space here, so I've got to... There we go, and then... There we go. Now, that's this piece of track taken care of, but I've got to do the same to this piece of track at the join. So I'll just move my track setter back so that it's on the second, I can get access to the second sleeper in, and I do the same again. So you're looking for the first sleeper with the chairs still intact. Okay. Again, if you want to do this another way, you can take a pin vise and put small holes in the sleepers. If you're careful, you can go straight in like that. You can now take that out, and it doesn't kink. Not finished yet, though. What you then do is you take your pair of pliers, and holding the track, you slide the two drills into the the other piece. Now, you should leave a small gap for expansion when the heat, but I tend to leave that on the straights. And round about the curves when it's when I want a transition without a kink, I tend to put them very close together. And um, you know, if you've got gaps on the other end of the rail, if you like, you'll get um, some expansion this summer without any without any trouble. I'll go and finish this off, and then I'll show you from a different angle how it looks. That's all the tracks in place now. Um, I'm going to now cut the cork back to give it the the, um, the ballast shoulder. Um, effect so when I do ballast it it sits and gives a, a realistic shoulder on the, the track. I'll also be taking the tracks up to um, put the, the foam um, banking um, risers in to give it the, the, the kind of curve that kind of banked super elevation as the trains go around at speed. You see the joins there there's no kinks um, in the track it's a nice flowing 36 inch curve and after I've got the cork cut back I'll measure the um, the the ply and I'll have a, a nice curved cut piece of ply on both sides of the, the tracks so it gives the creation of an embankment um, where the two main lines sit above the, the lower levels. So all that here will be scenic space for um, you know embankments and some maybe some low, low walls. 
so it's a, it's a work in progress but it, it is uh, it is getting there. If I zoom back out here, that's the, the turnout from the main line. We'll take the trains down to the, uh, the lower level where the station is, um, or locals coming from the TMD can also go down that route and, you know, vice versa when, they, when they're coming up and the trains are going to the, the TMD via this route here or stay on the main lines. Just going to fix this down now and um, I'll update you on some of the, the scenic ideas that I've had. Right, that's me ready to cut the wood now um, to the shape of the, the raised section. As you can probably see at the right hand side there the pencil lines following the curve and also on the left hand side there. These are sitting about 40 millimetres from the outer rail um, and the way I've managed to get a nice neat curve to follow the track is I've basically taken my, my gauge with a pencil taped to it and as I run that along it follows the curve. So I've managed to get the, the raised section all mapped out nice and neatly you can make the pencil marks there. Um, and the reason it's that distance from the outer rail is that I need to fit the, the overhead masts and they have to sit a certain distance away from the rail um, to look correct. I've also marked this section, and here you'll see lines. I'm going to cut them, I'm going to cut that line and that line with the, the saw, but I'm going to leave this one and that will start the, this section here will start the kind of, the descend on the, on the incline. So you know, start to slope down and I'm going to do that and then continue it around with ply. That's my my plan just now anyway. Um, it's, it's thin enough to be flexible when it's cut so if I cut those two curved lines it'll allow me to just droop it ever so slightly and fix it to the board at the correct angle when the time comes for putting the incline in and the track will run in between that as it follows the curve round to the, to the lower section. I can't go any further toward um, this turnout with the, the incline because I've got a track running under here and I don't want the, the wood dripping and, and the trains um, catching on the underside of the, the ply. So that's the plan just now regarding the, the start of the incline. And I'm leaving this bit here and that might be um, you know low relief buildings and whatnot, um, factory units and, and stuff, industrial buildings. Okay just moving on from my last clip um, I talked about cutting the, the curves of the, the raised section as you can see with the pencil lines here. Um, unfortunately with the track in position I can't do that because the, the width of the jigsaw would get in the way of the track or the track would get in the way of the jigsaw depending on which way you look at it. So what I'm going to have to do is, it's almost a mini civil engineering project here, I'm going to I've unscrewed this from the its legs, its temporary legs, and I've taken all the track pins out. And um, I'm going to basically drop the ply and remove it, leaving the rails in suspension. Uh, I'm going to have to do this because, as I said, I can't get the the um, the jigsaw close enough to that line, otherwise. So I'll prop these up with um, spare bits of ply and on legs until I've got it cut. I'll slide it back in place, pin it back down, obviously with the foam risers that I talked about earlier, and they will have the completed loop. That's the kind of plan. Let's say it's a kind of mini civil engineering project. I've not done this kind of thing before. I've not had to, but I've kind of come up with this solution. It saves me ripping the track up and, and dismantling it all when I've got a nice, you know, 36 inch curve there all the way around. That's the track beds now being dropped and taken away for cutting and sanding and I've replaced them with these temporary um, track beds, baseboards and uh, they're still sitting on the, the same legs as the, uh, the other pieces were so it's all at the same height and as you can see there's slight gaps here where the, the rails are just um, keeping themselves up. Nothing's been pinned down but as you can see that the flexi track has kept its shape in, in the curved design. Um, yeah, only a wee bit of adjustment when I put it back down, but in essence it's just a case of sliding the, the, um, 
the proper imply back into position and pinning it down again. Um, so, you know, it has managed to take that off there. There's small kinks in the track there, the join there that need that need change. But when that gets pinned back down with the, the track set of templates, it'll all go back to its um, original uh, shape and curve. So it shouldn't be a total relay job. There might be a wee bit of work involved with getting everything lined up again, but that's um, it's one of the hazards of uh, using the, the super elevation. You've got to lay the track and kind of lift it up anyway to slide this in. And also with the raised section, I wanted to cut it perfectly to, to match the, the curve. I didn't know what the curve would be before I laid the track, hence I couldn't cut the ply to shape before I laid it. Um, so it's a bit of planning and pre-planning and forward planning required to make sure it all kind of works out. So hopefully, um, as I move through this video, you'll see it starting to come back together again and um, we'll get some trains running on the, the upper level in the completed loop. As we look west from the TMD to the new race section um, that's getting worked on just now, my mind starts to drift towards what um, what local should be the first to to run round the completed loop on the upper section. Um, just for a bit of fun, I'm going to put some locos in the the screenshot after this, and if you've got any suggestions as to which one should should um, do the inaugural um, completed loop of the upper section, then just post a comment or go onto my Facebook page, Dean Park Station and uh, you know message me and uh, we'll see which one comes out on top and that local will run the first trip around the, the completed upper loop Okay, that's the upper main line now in place. Um, it's been fixed down. Uh, the cork has all been trimmed and the foam banking pieces have been put in place and they've also been trimmed. Um, I've deliberately left a little extra on the outside of the curves and that's just to help with the ballast to give a, a smoother ballast shoulder. If I didn't have that, it might be a bit of a, a drastic drop um, from the cork to the, the, uh, the baseboard. So it's just more of a gradual um, slope for the, the ballast shoulder when the ballast goes down. The curve falls all the way around there into a straight section and round the corner into the, the town. Um, That's a 36 inch curve and it flows nicely down towards the TMD which is just behind the camera. Now this piece here, um, I spoke to you in the last um, parts of the video, will branch off here and this large radius Y turnout um, this goes to the TMD and this one here goes to the incline and I'll show you more of that um, just now. This piece um, was where the incline will start and what I've done um, before I put the baseboard down is I, I cut a section um, so that will be the start of the incline and it gives it a more uh, gradual and smooth start um, from there right the way down so I'll just I'll just bend that down ever so slightly and that'll give the you know that'll continue on with the ply around the corner and I'm planning on having a 36, 36 inch radius um, incline as well or less um, the less the better so that's how I managed to get my way around that as you can probably see where I've cut the lines I left a gap there just so I can get a bit more play in it So that's what I'm going to be doing with the incline um, over the rest of the winter, which is really will be the last part of major track laying on the on the layout for now anyway. Yeah, so that's going to fall all the way around. But yeah, I'm impressed with uh, the um, the elevation foam. I have to say it does um, give that ever so gradual um, 
kind of canting on the on the curve to make it more realistic, especially at high speed. I'll go and show you it from a different angle now. Okay, here it is from the other angle. I'm um, we'll just going to do a, a fly round of the curve all the way around, and it joins the TMD and the main line along where the class 50s sitting. This section here where the the track disappears, that will be a, um, a kind of girder bridge um, and with brick supports etc. Um, and from the left hand side of that track, right the way along will be retaining wall in front of the, the TMD. And this here on the curve will be scenic with a, an embankment um, and then this area here is where the track will start to incline. This is from the, the fiddle yard section down here. That will start to incline and it will go around the curve. So this will be retaining wall for a, for a part until it gets up and maybe swings out a bit more and then a wee slight embankment and that's the kind of plan. And then a kind of raised section here so the, the embankment looks like it's going into a cutting and there will be a raised section kind of around the corner there towards the the uh, cleaning wagon and that might just be um, a raised industrial or residential kind of corner of the layout I don't really know I want some factory units so I might put them in that corner it just continues the kind of industrial theme from the town which is behind the camera just now into a more industrial uh, setting in the corner there where the boxes are and then round continuing the industrial setting till around about here maybe some low relief industrial um, buildings there and then into the TMD which again I might have some low relief buildings at the back there depending on space and I don't want it to look too too cramped so that's the plans um, I've managed to get this upper section laid um, for Christmas as was my was my desire to do so um, so a wee bit of hard work there cutting the, the ply to match the curve getting the super elevation foam pieces in position testing it um, I have not done a full loop yet, I'm resisting that just now until um, it's voted on who's the who's the first local to be going around this, so um, get your votes in. But yeah, that's it just now, and um, the next um, update, um, just before Christmas, hopefully I'll give you a, a little running session and we'll officially open the upper loop. Thanks for watching, cheers just now.